Are you looking for a new bike that won't break the budget? Well, in today's video, we're going to be talking about the pros and cons of four of the most popular budget bikes. Hey, and welcome back. I hope you're having a good day. My name's Josh, and I recently fell in love with the sport of mountain biking. It's so much fun, guys. So today in this video, we're going to break down four bikes and we're going to look at the pros and cons of each bike and if it can meet your needs. So there's so many people are trying to get into the sport of mountain biking right now, but they don't know where to start. So I hope in this video, we're going to be able to find the bike that's right for you. So the four bikes we're looking at today are all at $750 or less. And I love this price point because this is the threshold where bikes stop going from like a Walmart sporting good type bike and they start going to a bike that has modern specs that you're going to be able to really push on the trails and not have to worry about filing a warranty claim after every ride. So today we're going to be looking at three main components of each bike and each part is so important and we'll really weigh the pros and cons of each. So number one, we're gonna look at the head tube angle. The head tube angle is so important because that is what is gonna make the downhills way more comfortable and you're gonna feel way more in control. So the slacker the head tube angle, the more control you're gonna feel. And typically we're seeing bikes around the 67 to 68 degree. The really high end bikes will have 65, 66 and more of your older models will have a 69 to a 71 degree. So we're gonna take a look at that because that's the one part of the bike that you can't upgrade. So the next piece we're gonna look at is the drivetrain. And the drivetrain is so important because we want it to be efficient as we're pedaling. We don't wanna be pedaling and wasting our energy because we have a poor drivetrain. So we're gonna take a look at each of those and I'll explain the drivetrains as we go through. And finally, we're gonna take a look at the fork. And the fork is the suspension above that front wheel that really allows you to roll over the rocks and the, the roots and hit jumps with ease. So if you don't have a good suspension and a good fork, your ride will be very uncomfortable and you won't be able to push the limits and really gain skill like you wanna do. All right, so the four bikes we're gonna be taking a look at today are the Specialized Rock Hopper, the Giant Talon 2, the Diamondback Hook, and finally, the Marin Bobcat Trail. Super pumped, let's take a look. So we're here, we're on the Specialized website, and you can see they have kind of a lot of rock hoppers here. Um, so you can see they have a rock hopper all the way at $500, and they come in with 29s and 27s, so 27 and a half, so we're really excited here. They also just came out with this 26er, so you can get your kids on the bike as well. They have different levels here, so Rock Hopper's got the, the basic level, the Rock Hopper Sport, but we're gonna be taking a look at this Rock Hopper Comp today. So let's go ahead and click in here. So like I said, we're gonna be taking a look at the three main things, the head tube angle, we're gonna be taking a look at the fork and the drivetrain. Um, so let's go ahead and find the head tube angle. Usually it's all the way at the bottom here. Right here it says geometry. And I really like the specialized website because it really helps you understand what is what. See here, I click on seat post length, the saddle width. I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna find the head tube angle, which is right here. And you can see it's showing me what the head tube angle actually is. And you can see here it's 68 degrees. So that's right on par. That's kind of what we're looking at. We 68 degrees is a very good head tube angle and that's exactly what we want to see. So next, let's take a look and see what kind of drivetrain are we going to be running with on this. So the drivetrain here, let's see, keep Here it is, drive train. So on this bike, they're running a micro shift advent one by nine with the clutch. So micro shift is 
a newer company. Normally we're seeing SRAM and Shimano drivetrains, but Specialized has been starting to run these micro shifts and I've heard a lot of really good things. So the one thing to look at is it's a one by system. And this is really important because one buys really allow it for it to be like less cluttery. Um, you're only gonna have one, basically, uh, you're only gonna have one sprocket on the front end. So a lot of times on bikes you'll see they'll have three buys. Some of the older bikes have a three buys, we call that. So they have three different sprockets on the front. But on this, it only has one, and that's really the modern technology. We really wanna see just a one by system. And so we can see here, this is a one by nine. And it also has 11 by 42. So this is gonna give you a very big gear range. And that's what we're looking for. We wanna see that. If it was less than that, then it would really, if it was like 11 by 36, it would really make our climbing gears tough. So I think this will be pretty good. Very good drivetrain, very good head tube angle so far. So let's take a look at the fork. So here's the fork right here. So suspension, we're running a SRXCM 27.5. It's got 30 millimeter stanchions. It's a coil spring. Um, it comes with a lockout and it looks like you'll have between 80 to 100 millimeters of travel. And uh, basically the smaller bikes are gonna have 80 and 90 and then a medium and a large will have 100 millimeters of travel. So what does that mean? So number one, let's look at this travel right here, 100 millimeters of travel. That is pretty standard on this, this range. Um, it'll allow you to run over some roots, some rocks, some, uh, some jumps, but you will bottom out. It's a term we call when you compress that fork all the way you're gonna bottom out quickly on this bike. So it doesn't give you a lot of travel. You know, something I would like to see is around 120 or above. So that's one thing to note. One other thing that I think is really good is it does have a lockout here. So what that means is if you're going up a hill, you don't wanna have a lot of um, basically flexion in that fork so you can lock it out and it will be a little bit more stiff. And in the hill, you'll be able to climb a lot easier. So that's very good. But this Suntour XCM, we'll probably see this fork again. This is something that it's a very standard fork, but just keep in mind, it has only 100 millimeters, so that's kind of a knock on this fork. But overall, that's the specialized rock hopper, and that's, we're at the comp level. Rock hopper comp level, $750. By the looks of it, you're gonna get incredible drivetrain. You're gonna get a very nice head tube angle and you're gonna get kind of a mediocre for, for what you're paying for. Okay, for today's question of the day is all about this rock hopper we just looked at. Have you ridden this rock hopper? Do you know someone that's taken a ride on this thing? What did you love and what did you not like about the specialized rock hopper? All right, so the next bike we're gonna take a look at is the Giant Talon, and we're actually gonna look at the Giant Talon 2. So it comes in this series, it has a Talon 2 and a Talon 3. So similar to the Rock Hopper, there's different levels, but the Talon 2 does come in right at $750. And it's, let's just take a look, it's gonna give us a lot of great things. So let's go in here. Again, let's take a look at the head tube angle first. So we're gonna scroll all the way down Usually the geometry, the angles are always at the bottom here. So here we go, um, head tube angle. It's also 68 degrees. So this is the same exact uh, angle that, that we had on the specialized. So that's good, 68 degrees, that's good. Okay, we're gonna scroll up, let's find the drivetrain. So over here we can see the cassette, the crank set, so immediately what I see right here with this crank set, it gives me two numbers, a 22 and a 36. That's the amount of teeth on each uh, crank. And it, that means that there's a two by. So this bike has two different crates on the front. One has 22 teeth, one's 36. And then on the back, it looks like it's a nine, a nine speed, so 11 to 36. So it's a smaller gear range than what we saw before on that specialized. Um, so that's a little bit of a knock. I don't like to see that it's a two by system on this bike, 
I really wish it had a one by. Um, so let's take a look next at the fork. So we're gonna be running over here to the fork. Uh, and again, we're looking at the, the, you know, the brand, we're gonna look at what features it comes with, and of course the travel. So right here we're seeing a RockShox XC, XC30, and RockShox is a different brand, obviously. This is a brand that's actually a higher level than a um, Suntour SR. So kind of excited to see that. You're gonna see a lot better quality. If something goes wrong with this fork, you're gonna easily be able to replace it. And I think this looks really good. It's got another lockout. Um, as far as the travel that we talk about, 100 millimeters like we saw in the last bike, if you scroll up here, I believe it says it here in the, yep, right here, in this description, this hardtail is optimized, um, has a 100 millimeter suspension fork. So very similar in travel as that specialized, but I think because this is the RockShox fork, you're actually gonna get a little higher quality than what that XCM was on the specialized, so that's really good to see. So for this Giant, it was really good to see uh, the XC30 RockShox fork and the 68 degrees on that head tube angle. All right, so I really hope that this so far, this video has been helpful for you and really helping you understand what to look for in a bike. If it is, make sure you hit the like button for me and then go ahead and subscribe to the channel. That way you're notified every time I upload a video and you can see all the tips and tricks that I'm putting out there so you can upgrade your skills and your bike on a budget. All right, let's get back into this. Okay, let's talk about the Diamondback Hook. This bike comes in at $750, you can see it here. And this is part of the Diamondback line of hardtails called the Hook Line and Sinker. And the Hook is more of their entry level bike on that, that um, bike line. So let's go ahead Take a look at it. So let's go find the head tube angle like first, like we always do. Let's go all the way down here is where their, their geometry is. And we'll find this bike head angle is what they call it here. And it's also 68 degrees. So it's awesome. All three of these bikes we've looked at so far are at 68 degrees. Very nice progressive head tube angle and that'll really allow it to, to, to take to tackle the trails. So next we're gonna go up to the specs. Let's take a look. We're gonna find the, here's the cog set. Um, so that tells you um, the rear cog, we call it, um, call it a cassette. Um, basically how many gears you have. So it's eight speed. And you can see here the rear derailleur is eight speed. And this says SRAM X3, it's actually an X4. Um, and I know that because I have this bike. And actually, if you wanna see my deeper review on this bike, um, go ahead and click up here. And yeah, I love this bike, I own it, so I'm a little biased right now. But yeah, the rear derailleur is actually a SRAM X4 and it's an eight speed. And this bike is a one by system. So like we said, it has um, one sprocket up front and then eight in the back. And this really allows you to, you know, just have a very minimal drivetrain. You're not gonna have a lot of maintenance issues. You're not gonna have a lot of uh, chain drops. Chain drops are a very big thing when it's a two and a three by system because the chain just doesn't know where to go and it's falling off the, you know, the whole uh, drivetrain. So the one thing that this bike does have and some of the others, so you saw in some of the others that talked about they had a clutch. Well, this bike does not have a clutch. But what, so what Diamondback did was they put in this chain guide with a roller. And this chain guide is actually, basically allows you to not need a clutch because what a clutch does, it keeps tension on the chain so that way you don't drop the chain. And this chain guide actually puts a lot of tension on the chain and really keeps it on there tight. So it's really good they did that. Next, let's look at that fork we talked about. And right here, you can see in the middle here, it has a SR Suntour XCM 120 millimeter travel. So this is almost the same fork as we saw on the Specialized, but this one has 120 millimeter travel. 
So it's a little bit different, very similar, the same, the same line of fork, but this one has a lot more capability. So that's a big plus on that bike. So for this Diamondback, we have uh, basically all around it looks pretty good. It is a one by eight system, so there's less gears than on some of the other ones. And you can see right here, the largest gear is a 32 T. That means climbing on this bike is a little bit of a challenge. If that, we'd, like I said, we want to see that probably over 40 and then you'd have a lot easier climbing. So anyways, the drive chain is like mediocre. It is a one by system, but we wish to have more, um, basically more range. The head tube angle is right on par, but we want to see 68 degrees and that bike fork is solid. It's a 120 millimeters of travel and that so far is the most travel we've seen. So that really allows you to go over more rocks, more jumps, more routes, and really push that, that bike. All right, so finally, we're gonna take a look at the Marin Bobcat Trail. And this line of bikes is real nice. It has the five, the four, and the three. So we're actually gonna be taking a look at the four today. The four is right in our price range and it actually comes in um, at $699. You can see that here. Um, and this comes from a brand, uh, Marin, maybe it's not as popular, uh, but I love it. This brand has been known as like one of the more progressive lines out there. And so I was really excited when I found this bike fits within our price range and I think it really meets a lot of the different things we're looking at. So let's go ahead and take a look at the geometry here. They have to, theirs is laid out a little differently so you can see specs, geometry. So let's go find that um, head tube angle. So we'll scroll down here, head tube angle right here, 67 degrees, 67 and a half if you have the 27.5. Um, so right here, like I said at the beginning, the slacker the head tube angle, the better. So that puts that front wheel in front of you even more and you really feel just a lot more secure as you're ripping downhill. So I know it's only a half a degree right now or a whole degree if you're going with a little larger bike, but that half degree makes a world of a difference uh, on the ride of the bike. So that is a huge plus for this bike. Like, I can't say enough, that's a huge plus, 67 and a half. Okay, so let's check out the specs. Let's go check out the drivetrain. Okay, where is this? I see it. we have a Shimano Altus 9 speed for the rear derailleur. But this tells me right here, Shimano Altus double, it has a front derailleur, so that means there's Yep, so this is also a two by system right here, similar to the giant we looked at. So, and it's a two by nine. Okay, yeah, so this has a total of 18 gears, nine gears in the, in the back and two up front. So again, it's a two by system. It might be a little clunky up front. You're more issues, more maintenance, more possibility of a chain drop. So uh, I'm a little disappointed to see this drivetrain on the bike. Um, but that's okay. Let's go over here to the fork. Oh, okay, let's go see right here at the fork. So we're gonna run another SR Suntour XCM. So we've seen that same fork three times. Um, you can tell that this is a fork that meets this price range and these companies wouldn't be putting on if it couldn't really handle it. So this bike, um, I believe this, yeah, right here, it does have a lockout and 120 millimeters of travel. So this by far is um, probably one of the better forks on this on this list right here. 120 millimeters of travel. So like I said, a lot more travel. You can really hit just a lot more with the bike. And then it also has that lockout feature. So the lockout feature is really important for when you're you're doing uphills and you want a lot of stability out of that fork. You don't want a lot of all your energy going towards and into the suspension where you lose a lot of your drivetrain and your lot of your power. So that's really, really good. So the Marin, and not to mention, let me just throw, throw this out there. The Marin looks amazing. Look at this bike. I love the way they have the white wall on there. 
Anyways, so the Marin comes in the cheapest bike, the slackest head tube angle, and probably the best fork on the on this list. So I don't know. If I was buying bikes again, maybe I'd go after this bike. I'm not sure. All right, so thanks for joining us. We've looked at four incredible bikes. These bikes, you know, they can all get you on the trail and get you just fall in love with this, get you jumping, going over rocks, going through the single tracks, going on just the hard trail through your neighborhood. These bikes are all incredible. Take a look at all of them. Find out what bike works best for you. What colors do you like? What feel do you like? And go to your local bike shop. They'll oftentimes allow you to test ride these bikes. And nothing tells you how much you like the bike than you being on top of it and feeling it for yourself. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video of four bikes that can help you fall in love with mountain biking. And if you love this video, again, go ahead and like it, leave a comment, let us know, like I said, let us know if you've been on that Specialized Rock Hopper because that's been the most popular bike for years. But go ahead, click subscribe, make sure you follow along our journey as we're upgrading our skills and our bike on a budget. All right, have a good day and let's get riding.